will talk about machines and permutations. Is it going? All right, so I'll start with basically introducing the idea of a permutation pattern. And if you come to the seminar regularly, you've seen this not very long ago when I you know, Bloom talked. And if you come to the seminar irregularly, you've probably seen it at some point. But I'll, I'll go over it anyway. So what's a permutation? Well, OK, the definition of a permutation is something that looks like this. So it's a list of the first n numbers in order, in some order. And we're going to be looking at permutation patterns, which means we're going to be looking at subsequences of permutations and seeing what we can say about them. So here's, here's a subsequence. And we'll look at the relative order of this subsequence. So this is the smallest. This is the second smallest, this is the third smallest, and this is the fourth smallest. And so we can summarize that by saying that this subsequence is a 3, 1, uh, 2, 4 subsequence. And that 3, 1, 2, 4 represents the relative order of those terms. And we'll say if, that, if a permutation has a subsequence like this, we'll say it matches the pattern 3, 1, 2, 4. And if it doesn't have one, we'll say it avoids the pattern. So this one, this one matches the pattern 3, 1, 2, 4, and it avoids the pattern 1, 2, 3, 4. I hope. Uh, so if, if you can find one, 1, 2, 3, 4 there, I guess you win something. Um, <laughs> So are the, these definitions, are, I'm not going to write them formally because you don't get anything out of that, but I hope it's clear what it means for a permutation to match or avoid a pattern. Um, OK, and I'm going to want another, another definition, or another pair of definitions, actually. So let me, let me first write this permutation in another way, which is useful sometimes to think about them. I'm going to write it as a function from, uh, from the set of the first eight numbers to the set of the first eight numbers. So these are eight lines. If I can count, yes, there are eight, eight lines. And so the first element is three, so I'm going to write one, two, three there, eight, 8, 7, 6, 5, 2, 1, uh, 7, 4, 6. So that is the same, what I've just drawn there is a representation of the same permutation. And if I draw sort of, at some point I draw some vague diagrams that look like this, this is what I'm, this is what I'm trying to say. So, all right, and I wanted to find what it means for a permutation to be decomposable. And it's easiest to see this in terms of the diagrams. So the permutation is, is decomposable if, on the diagram, it looks like this. You have a bunch of dots up here and a bunch of dots down here, and nothing in the other spaces. Now, I'm not telling you where these lines could be. They could be, they could be very lopsided. But if it looks like that, then we'll say it's decomposable, and more precisely, We'll say it's uh, skew decomposable. And we only care about when the quadrants two and four, not like in one and three. So these have to be empty. Okay, but but, but uh, we we can't like reverse the concept and put. If you reverse it, it becomes a different kind of decomposable. Or okay. Direct sum decomposable or something like that. Okay. And I, I may I may use that later, but I just want to get one of these. So if it, if it, if this is not true, if this can't be done, then we call it uh, indecomposable. Because so it's part of the other smaller than symmetric than groups. It, exactly, yes, yes. This is uh, the, the lines, vertical lines, can be other than those lines? Uh, they will be presumably yeah, okay, so I'm gonna... halfway between, yeah. yeah. So 
All right, so a first interesting question, which is, so we, we know, of course, uh, remind me who it is who proved that, who counted the permutations? You, you always say. Oh, no, that might have been Gershon. Might have been Gershon, so I guess the first person in, 11, in, the, in the 12th century to, to find the number of permutations, although, of course, he was not the first by any means. Uh, <laughs> what, did but, you, what did you find? He counted, counted the number of permutations. He wrote it down. The first okay. legal school. Oh, the number of permutations? <laughs> okay. okay, yes. So, so we're going to do something slightly more complicated. I, I'd just like to argue how you might, how you could count the number of, of decomposable, of indecomposable permutations. So, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You count the number of decomposable ones and subtract it off. So, all right, so, so what's going on here, you, to count the counting indecomposable permutations, what do you do? You first, you count, you count, the, you count the decomposable ones. And so you have to decide how it's going to be decomposed. I'm going to decompose it into, you know, it could be, of course, this one looks like it's in two pieces, but there could be multiple indecomposable permutations here. Here I have four. Each of these will be indecomposable. And I just have to sum up over all possibilities for the sizes of these boxes and multiply the number of ways to fill each box together. That would give me the number of decomposable permutations, and then I'll subtract that from n factorial and get the number of indecomposable ones. So the sequence, the sequence starts uh, 1, 1, 3, 13, 71, 71. Uh, I don't remember the next one, but I have it somewhere here. OK, I think 459. That last one might be wrong because I did it by hand. I know I, did. I shouldn't have. Um, so this is, of course, on OEIS, and I don't remember the number, but it's, well, if you know the first few terms, you can find it. Um, OK, so I've counted indecomposable ones. Now I want to count the ones that avoid certain patterns. So these, this is the classic subject of study in, the, in permutation pattern land. So let's do this. There's a formula for this? Um, there's a there's a recurrence that so this is a recurrence it's complicated there's a slightly there's a slightly nicer one that if you if you do a little bit of uh, not so I, I should say that this is the zero term by the way uh, no it isn't it's one two so this so this is this is this this, per, this recurrence has Two to the n minus one, or something like that, terms because because there are two to the n minus one compositions. But by doing a little bit of work, you could make it something like a n equals sum of a n minus k k factorial, and there's probably a minus one somewhere in there. So there's a nicer recurrence for this, but I, I like to think of it this way because we're going to use this kind of of logic. OK, so I want to count permutations avoiding some patterns. We won't start with, with 1, 2, 3, 4, because that's hard. We'll start with permutations avoiding the pattern. Well, permutations avoiding the pattern 1. How many, how many of those are there? So, so yes, there's one, just period, one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the empty permutation. Anything else matches this pattern. So the sequence would be 1, 0, 0, etc. And this is in OEIS. And <laughs> is there a comment on the sequence no. discussing that? I don't know. Um, <laughs> it should be. Also, also, really, this should be sequence number 1 in OEIS, but it isn't. Um, OK, so slightly, very, very slightly harder. Permutations avoiding one two. Um, 
Okay, how many of those are there of length n? One. One. One of length n. So. so from this you can easily see the pattern, the permutations <laughs> avoiding uh, one, two, three. Well, obviously we just took partial sums, so that's going to be it forever. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't that be nuts? Uh, so is that an OEIS? This one is also an OEIS, and it should be number 11 or something. I don't know. <laughs> or 111,111. So this is, of course, if I were to avoid 2, 1, that would be the same. And you could avoid multiple patterns at once. If I try to avoid both of these, then I would get the sequence 1, 1, 0, etc. Uh, let's do something slightly more interesting. Permutations. Avoiding. 1, 3, 2. Okay, so this sequence is uh, 1, 1, 2, 5, 14, 42, 1, 32, etc. It's ooh, 1, 32, 1, 3, 2. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be a coincidence. <laughs> the, the Illuminati really are everywhere. Um, just said that I'm filming now. <laughs> well, they, they like it for people to know that they're always watching. <laughs> That's why they put an eye on the dog bill. <laughs> so the, these are the. I think I broke Kelly. <laughs> um, so these are the Catalan numbers. Um, and it turns out that all the all the patterns of length three, if you try to avoid one, one pattern of length three, the number of permutations that do that is the Catalan numbers. It's given by the Catalan numbers, and we'll see that in a bit. Um, okay. For permutations of length 4, it gets a lot more interesting. For one thing, you start getting different answers when you get use a different pattern. So, is there a difference, uh, a major, between avoiding, say, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 3, 2, or is it isomorphic? So, those. those are isomorphic in a, in a way, but it's not obvious. It, it's now 1, 3, 2, and let's say you could always flip the permutation horizontally to 2, 3, 1, and then of course there would be the same number because they would just be the reverse of those permutations. And, or you could turn it upside down. This one, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 3, 2 is a not, not quite trivial transformation of the permutations that will let you prove that it's the same. And we'll see, we'll see a proof of that. What about uh, just the permutation that switches 2 and 3 and leaves everything else the same? The permutation that switches 2 and 3 and leaves everything else the same? Um, you, that would be this one. <laughs> you mean 1, 3, 2? No, I mean, uh, if you have a... In general, you mean? Yeah. Oh, 1, 3, 2, four, Given five, six, that you have a permutation with, uh, that avoids... Uh, if you have a permutation that so has one, two, does not one, literally three, mean that these numbers appear in this order, but there are three numbers whose oh. greater and <laughs> okay. It, the yeah, one comes yeah. first. Um, for for example, this permutation I wrote up there. I don't know. If you get two minutes late. Yeah, this yeah, permutation sorry. matches matches one three two because, for example, one seven six there is a one three two path. Okay. Yeah, it, it should be maybe it's a better way. Yeah, it, it, it really it really is a better way to say it's seven, we, but we're stuck with this, <laughs> this notation now. Um, so, for for patterns of length four, there are three different sequences that result, and all the permutations, all the patterns that have the same sequence are are called a Wilf class, and so there are three Wilf classes of length four. So, uh, I haven't. I didn't write down enough terms for the, of these sequences to write them down. But, so this one, all of them, of course, start 1, 1, 2, 6, 23, because of length 4, there's only one that matches the pattern. And then the next term is always 103, and then they start to diverge. So the 1, 2, 3, 4, and there are a bunch that are, that are the same. 1, 2, 4, 3 is a non-trivial equivalence. Uh, 1, 4, 3, 2, all of these, and of course, flipping, reversing everything you can do to them. This it gives a sequence that has a finite enumeration scheme. And if you don't know what that is, 
well, don't worry about it. It means we can produce the sequence whenever we want. Um, we can easily get thousands and thousands of terms of this sequence. Uh, 1, 3, 4, 2, and also 2, 4, 1, 3. Uh, we had a talk recently by John about these. Uh, these have an algebraic generating function, which means when you're teaching calculus, you could have your calculus students crank out the Taylor, the Taylor series with these coefficients uh, using by giving them an algebraic function to calculate the Taylor series of. Um, this is not a recommended problem <laughs> <laughs> because the function is a little bit more complicated than what they're used to, but <laughs> but it still means it can be very quickly and efficiently computed. And then the last category which contains four permutations, which are the or two permutations, which are the various reflections of this. This one is it has some question marks and probably deserves a few more question marks. Um, we know the first 37 terms, right? That's the record now. And how much money do we get if we figure out the thousandth term? It's a time dependent. Okay, the amount of money, if, if Dr. Zalberger has to pay you money if you come up with the thousandth term of this sequence and can prove it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and, and the amount of money goes down over time, right? Because computers are getting better. Yeah. So, so, so hurry up. Um, so, what I'll show you in a, in a few minutes is a way is a, another way to generate the sequence other than just enumerating all the permutations is enumerating slightly different things. And we were hoping that that would let us get the thousandth term, but it hasn't worked yet. Um, the last comment: the biggest pixel recently was Brian and yeah. collaborator Fred Johnson, and using his method with a bigger computer. And it was extended to 37 times. Right. How many times? 37. So Brian got, you got 32, right? Or 34? 31. 31. Okay. I want to say it's up to 36 now. Though. Yeah. Okay. So, so progress has been slow. And what's the money down to now? It's 120 euros. 120 euros? Yeah. Okay, so it is, it's going down over time, not just because of time, but also because of the euro. <laughs> okay, so, so yeah, you really better hurry. All right, so, so now I want to talk about our, our result, and our is me and Michael Albert and Shane Homberger, Jay Panton, Vince Vauder, and so we I came up with this independently of them, and we both presented it. What does finite enumeration scheme mean in terms of the Taylor, uh, Taylor series? Oh, the Taylor series is, uh, well, Your it's, it's right? not algebraic. It is, the, this one's a, hol it's a holonomic function, so it solves the differential equation. Oh, I see. So uh, an algebraic differential equation. No, it's a linear differential equation <laughs> with, <laughs> but with, with polynomial, polynomial coefficients, right. Okay. The, this one probably does not. And if, if you could even prove that, that would be great. Uh, we really don't know what kind of object this might be. A algebraic differential, a solution to an algebraic differential equation no, is a candidate. Eagle Park and the student, uh, Scott Garber, claim that they're about to prove this. Okay, yeah, I, I, I know they're about to prove it, but I, <laughs> I'm not... About to prove that it is not. It is it not all enough, yeah. and, and maybe not algebraic, too. I, no, it implies. Algebra doesn't imply. Algebra doesn't imply. Sorry, yeah, no, I mean an algebra. It doesn't solve an algebraic. There's only the known. An algebraic differential equation. So the yeah, no, no, there's no known. Yeah. So the module generated by this is not the known. Uh, right. So 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 this one's pro yes. They this one's probably pretty bad. That's that's the upshot. And maybe 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 very bad. Um. So maybe I don't know. We great. Well, yes, there might be, it's possible that there's something nobody has thought of, a kind of object or something that just solves this right away. Well, you get 120 euros if you can figure it out. So. Okay, so I, I want to show you a method that we have for calculating permutations. I discovered this at the same time as the as Albert et al. This is a Yeah. The prover, the prover, it's a bet I made this, I'm not trying to solve. 
And oh. as time goes on, we'll get Oh, the somebody else will get him. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but he should probably give you a cut, perhaps perhaps 50%. I think would be fair. So, so 60 years. That's very different. <laughs> yeah, well, now, now it's not worth it, right? <laughs> now we have to make a side deal. <laughs> OK, thank you. So, so I, I discovered what I'm about to show independently of Albert and Fodder and, and their students. Um, and we both presented it at, in March at, at the Permutation Pattern Special Session, and we didn't know that the other one was going to present it. So, <laughs> as it turns out, we had, slight, we had done slightly different things with it. So what I'm going to show you is what... So there's some overlap, and I'll show you what I did and comment on what they did and what we both did. So, so, let, me, so let me show you, first of all, uh, okay, let me, let me start by showing you what the idea is. Um, I have another board over here. Let's get this out of the way. Or not, it doesn't seem to work. Okay. So, this idea is a way, to, a, a way to generate permutations that avoid a certain set of patterns. And it consists of a machine to do it for you. So here's the machine. Here's what it looks like. It has a box. And the box has an input and an output. And on the input line, you write all the numbers up to n. And you can put them into the box one at a time. There's also a bypass around the box. OK. Now there are some rules for how this machine runs. So at a given step, you can either put an element from here into the box, and it disappears inside, or you can put it on bypass and leave it on the out line. And you should think of this as a conveyor belt. So once you move something here, it drifts off the end and is set as up. So, and then you do this again. So. Uh, you can put it into the box, or you can bypass the box. And after you bypass the box, with, after an element bypasses the box, you're allowed to take elements in the box and also move them out. So that, you, can't, you can't do that after you put one in, but after you bypass, you're allowed to empty some elements, but not necessarily all, from the box. And then the interesting part is that there are rules for what goes on inside the box. So. We, we will set, we'll set different rules for what can happen inside the box and get a different set of permutations that we can obtain through this process. So this is what, uh, what we're calling a C machine. And it's basically just a, it's just a machine for generating permutations. That's all. OK, what happens if we have no rules about, about what's going on in the box? The mi minimum set of rules we're willing to give about what's, about what's going on in the box is when we put a per an element in the box, we never move it again except to eject it from the box. Excuse me, yes? how does this generate a permutation? Oh, let, let, me, let me demonstrate it in operation. I'm, so I'm going to try to generate the permutation 4, 1, 5, 3, 2. OK. So, at the beginning, I have all the elements, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, lined up on the input. I'm going to, put, I'm going to take 1, and I'm going to put uh, 1 into the box. So now I have a situation where the box contains 1, and the input line is this. Next, I'm going to put 2 into the box. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Next, I'm going to put. Uh, 3 into the box. Um, I did not leave enough space to put 3 into the box. Yeah. <laughs> 1, 3, 2, 4, 5. So, so, okay, now I need to get I need to get 4 at the front of the permutation, so I'm going to take 4 and bypass the box with it. Why did you put the 3 in the middle? I put the 3 in the middle because I'm allowed to put it wherever I want, and that's where I decided to put it. But really, it's because 3 is between 1 and 2 here, so I wanted it between. 
I'm going to take the 4 and bypass the box. So 4 is here. And now I'm going to use, I just bypassed the box, so I'm allowed to take things out, and I choose to take out 1. And you're allowed to take out any number that you I could take out 0 or more. Yes. Yeah. Uh, why couldn't you just send 4 into the box and put it in the front? Uh, because you're, because if I did that, I couldn't get it out in the, in the first place. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, also see. I, I could also take two, three out, yeah. and I could even take the whole thing out if I want. Do they know at all? No, they have to be in the oh, same, same order. order. Yeah. Once they're in the box, I will never change the order of them. That's the that's the fundamental. Can take any subset of the... I can take any prefix of them out. Oh, you can take prefix. Yes, I'm only going to take them out from the. So you can take one, 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 three, one, three, two. Yes. One, three. Yeah. So. Uh, Yeah. Are the permutations that you're supposed to present some sort of class? They represent some it, class? Yes, it, it, we'll do that in a minute, but for now I'm not putting any restrictions on them, they're just general permutations. Okay, so you could have, what he said, you could have actually, in this, you could have put the 4 in front. I could have put the 4 so in front. So this will generate, if you have no... This will generate any permutation, any. yes. Okay. This, this, machine, this machine has no restrictions on what it generates. Okay, so this is more general than the but, real but, machine. But it is nice because it can only generate each permutation in one way, which is a theorem, but... Okay. So, uh, anyway, I'm at this state, and the last... So, the last step is I'm going to put 5, bypass the box with 5, and then shift everything out. 4, 1, uh, 5, 3, 2. The box is empty, all the inputs are used, and so I'm done. Yes? Are you allowed to um, put 5 in the box, and now we have no more inputs and there's stuff stuck in the box? Uh, no. Okay. You have to, the machine has to use up everything, otherwise it has failed to generate a permutation. Okay. Um, okay, so here I, I, as I said, I'm not yet restricting what can be, what permutations are allowed to exist inside the box. Right now, anything is allowed to exist inside the box. But in order to make things interesting, we have to create some restrictions, as is so often true. Um, so I'm going to start restricting what I'm allowed to have in the box by making it by requiring it to avoid some pattern. Okay, really dumb example. Uh, permutation in box. So, suppose I make the permutation inside the box avoid the pattern 1. What can I get out now? I well, I can't actually put anything into the box. So all I can do is bypass things. So I get an increase in permutation. So, so the output, or the set of permutation I can generate will then avoid 2. Okay, what if the permutation in the box avoids 1, 2. Or, actually, that's, yeah, let's say 1, 2. So now, what does that mean? That means the permutation inside the box has to be descending. So, I, I can, we can visualize this in the following way. Here's the box, and you have elements inside it, possibly arranged like this. And when you, so when you put the element in the box, it has to go to the, it has to go to the end of the box. And if you think about this, this is kind of like a stack, a FIFO stack, a like LIFO. LIFO stack. And it's a famous result that this So I didn't mean you, so I didn't interrupt. Yeah. There's no texting it out for this. Anybody you want to text has to I won't mention the next part. Okay. I thought you were talking to me. No. <laughs> <laughs> <Somebody else. laughs> okay. Okay, and if I and if I change this to two one, then I get the opposite situation lined up like this. And and okay, you can you can check with a little bit of work that the result will avoid three, two, one. And here's so here's the general theorem, which is the key to all of this. If I put in the permutation uh, pi, 
of length n, then, well, do you want to say it? Well, I don't know. You 